Good morning. Thank you for joining us again for a wonderful adventure in God's awesome and mighty living word. I come to you on behalf of the pastor and the membership of New, Ministry, New Life Ministries Church in Plato, Missouri. I come to you in the name of the Lord to share with you what I believe he has placed on my heart to share with the body of Christ. Before we go into today's message, let's go before the Lord in prayer. Dear Father, we come into your presence praising your name and worshiping you and blessing your name, glorifying you in all things, for you're the source of our life, of our strength, of our health. You're the source of our blessings, and it is you, by your grace, that has saved us. So Father, I just ask as I humble myself under your mighty hand that you would anoint these lips of clay and I will be an oracle of your will and of your word to your people to encourage them to lift up the bow down heads and to strengthen the feeble knees and to mend the broken hearts. I ask that you will empower my words that they will let your people know the love that you have for them and that they will realize the faithfulness that is in your word and the truth that is in your word. Now they will put your word above anything else that they might hear, no matter who it is that's speaking, but they will hear your word for your word is spirit and your word is life. And we give you all the glory, the honor and the praise in Jesus' sweet name, amen. As you can see, our, our subject today that we'll be speaking on is, what will you say? Uh, <clears throat> man is a, a communicative being. He, he communicates, he speaks, he talks. And even though we have other animals like parrots and, and um, that can mimic human speech, um, only man seems to be able to have abstract speech. In other words, we can speak about things that do not yet exist materialistically, but we can think of something and describe what we're thinking of and all abstractly. So we communicate with one another through uh, speech, through uh, writing, through so many other venues that we communicate socially with one another. But having said all of that, uh, there's coming a day and a time when we will stand before our Creator and we will have to explain to Him why we did what we did. And I have to remind you of that. I want you to go with me to Second Peter, the first chapter. And we're going to start at the 12th verse. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though you know them, and be established in the present truth. In other words, Peter, if we read the preceding verses, Peter is <coughs> sharing with them about the Lord and what the Lord has said and about the kingdom of God. And, uh, and so he's letting them know, you already know this. And so there are a lot of things that we've shared with you through this channel, through these video casts, uh, as well as in person, of what the Word of God has said. And we try to keep your mind focused on those things because there's so much, so much other that's being said over the social media, over the, the news, uh, and even in uh, uh, private conversation between individuals, so much that is said that is trying to capture our attention. But the most important thing is the Word of God. Are you hearing what God is saying? Have you listened to what He is saying? And what is your response to that? What is your response to what God has said? Do you believe in His Word? Do you believe that His Word is true? Or do you just kind of put it out there as 
being uh, just this side of being a fairy tale, this side of just being imagination. But do you really believe that it's true? He says, um, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things. And I'm saying the same thing. I'm going to continue to remind you and myself of what the Word of God says. And I, and I confess this to you. I don't come to you as if I have arrived or I'm the standard or I'm the authority on these things. I'm not. I'm in the, I'm in the same boat as you in that we are seeking to please God. We're seeking his face. We're seeking to make heaven our home. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. But... Um, but I, I am compelled by the Holy Spirit to share with you continuously the truth of God's word so that you will have that light to guide your path in this life and you'll be able to walk upright before him and please him in all that you do. I will not be negligent in that. I'm going to tell you the truth. And let me tell you something. It's not always comfortable for me to tell you the truth. It's not always comfortable for, for me to um, to say some of the things that I've had to share with you because of the fact that uh, it hits me first. And it's not comfortable for me because it hits my flesh first. And yet I'm going to share it. Even though it might hit me, I'm going to share it. Even though I might have failed, I'm going to share the truth so that we all will know what the truth is because it is only through the truth that we are made free once we know that truth. Verse 13, yea, I think it meet as long as I am in this tabernacle. In other words, I think that it is proper as long as I'm in this tabernacle, as long as I'm in this body to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. If, if I've got to get you uh, uh, stirred up, if I've got to nudge you, then I'm going to do that. Even if it means you getting upset with me. If you getting upset with me will save your soul and will bless you in receiving rewards from the Lord in the end, then guess what? To me, it's worth it for you to be upset with me. It's worth it for you to get angry with me. It's worth it for you to even uh, disassociate with me and so, so that you might associate with the Lord because he's primary. He's first. He's the most important um, person anywhere. <clears throat> Verse 14, knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has showed me. And in this respect, I'm not saying to you that, uh, that I'm going to die today or die tomorrow. I don't know when, none of us know when we're going to die. But we know this, I know this, that there are more years behind me than there are ahead of me. And any of us can be called home. There is no, no certain standard that says uh, you have to reach a certain age before you can die. The young die as well as the old. It's always been that way and it always will be that way. But while I'm in this body, while I am breathing, while I'm, I'm able to communicate with you, I'm going to share with you what the Lord has placed in his word and what he has given me to share with you. Verse 4, 15. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always in remembrance. Uh, I might be off scene, but these video casts will still be going. You still have uh, access to them. And these words will constantly be right there to remind you of your obligation, your duty, your um, uh, uh, obedience to be be had before the Lord. Um, he says, For we have not followed cunningly devised fables when we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. So uh, what I share with you when I, when I tell you something that I know 
it's something that I know. It's not something that uh, I heard somewhere. If it, if it, if if I'm going to share with you something that I heard, I'm going to tell you that it's something that I heard. But when those when the, it's something that I know of, that there is no doubt in my mind because I have experienced it, and I'm going to share that with you, and nothing is going to move me from that. And it's up to you to accept it or reject it, but that's on you. Let's go to 2 Corinthians, the fifth chapter. We're going to begin at the first verse. Uh, so I, my, my subject here, again, what will you say? When you stand before your creator, what will you say? And this is, this is to cause you to take inventory of your life right now. If tomorrow, if tonight, if in the next few hours, you are called home to stand before Christ and to give an account of the deeds that are done in your body, what will you say to him? What can you say? And I'm speaking primarily, this message is to those that know Christ, those that have professed to know him and have accepted him as your Lord and Savior. Um, if you do not know Christ and you're you, uh, viewing this video cast, uh, then you need to make arrangements to know him. You need to confess your sins before him and ask him into your life as your Lord and Savior so that you can be saved. Paul is telling the church at Corinthians here, at, at Corinth here, uh, in verse 1 of chapter 5 in 2 Corinthians, For we know that if our earthly house, this tent, is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made by hand, eternal in the heavens. And we see this same thing Paul is talking about over in the 8th chapter of his letter to the church, uh, to Romans, uh, the 8th chapter of Romans. And he talks about how we yearn for a, uh, a new body. We yearn for the for the manifestation, not only us, but creation. All creation is yearning for the manifestation of the sons of God. That means that when we receive our new bodies. He also talks uh, in the first letter that he wrote to the church at Corinth, he talks about in the 15th chapter, he talks about how we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. So this mortal shall put off uh, uh, the mortal and shall take on immortality. Uh, we, we have a, a, a glorious body, one that is will be just like Christ's body, the body that he manifested after the resurrection, the one that came back to life full and had conquered death, hell, and the grave. That's a body that he's giving us, that he is offering to us. And that's what he's talking about here. Uh, we have a building from God who, a house not made by hand, eternal in the heavens. In other words, uh, this new body is not something that was given to us by our mother and father. It wasn't made by human endeavors, but it was made by God, by the Holy Spirit. For also in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed with our habitation, which is from heaven. If indeed having been clothed, we shall not be found naked. We won't be found uncovered. We won't be exposed. For we who are in this tent, and that's what this body is, the body that we live in right now, it's, it's really not us. This body is not you. This is, this is the house that you live in. It's a house that your soul and spirit dwells in. It's a physical connection between you and the physical creation. And that's what God designed it to be. However, it's a tent, if you will, in the sense that it's a temporary lodging. It's a temporary dwelling. But what he has in store for us, the body that he has set apart for us, that he has already set waiting for us, is a body that is created for eternity. It's an eternal body. Now, the body that you're in right now, it will be raised if you're not saved, you're still going to have a resurrection. But the Bible calls that the second resurrection. And that second resurrection or the second death will be that you, the body that you have right now will be what you will have for eternity. So with the aches and the pains, the feelings, the, the shortcomings, all the inadequacies and stuff, that's what you will have for eternity. 
but you can trade that in. You can you can make sure. You can make your, as the scripture said, you can make your, your election and calling sure by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and following after his word, after his will, to please him in this body. Because you're going to have to give an account of what you've done in this body. I've got to give an account of what I've done in this body, both good and bad. All of it is going to be there. The things that I regret will be exposed. The things that uh, that I rejoice in will be exposed. All those things will be brought to the table. But the only thing that's going to save me, the only thing that's going to set me free is the fact that Jesus Christ recognizes me as his sibling. He recognizes me as a son of God. Join air with him. That's the only thing that's going to save me. And that's the only thing, excuse me, that's going to save you. Verse 4 again. For we who are in this tent groan, being burdened, inasmuch as we do not desire to be stripped, but to put on clothing, that that which is mortal may be swallowed up by life. In other words, we're not, it's not just a deal. Some of us want to get out of this body, just get rid of it because it, the, the aches, the pains, the, the, the afflictions that we go through, all of the things that, that used to work but don't work now anymore. And I want to just get it off of us. But Paul says it's not enough just to get rid of this. He said that's not, that's not really what we're after. We're not wanting to be stripped so that our spirit and soul is exposed, but we want to put on something. Because we put that, when we put that glorious body on us, it will swallow up everything that is a resemblance of the old. Everything that's not of Christ will be swallowed up. That's why in the same uh, 15th chapter of 1 Corinthians, he says, Oh, death, where is your, strength, your sting? Oh, grave, where is your victory? He says, uh, death is swallowed up in life. And that's what he says is that that which is mortal, this what we're in right now, may be swallowed up by life. Verse four. OK, verse five. Now, he who has prepared us for very thing is God for this very thing is God who also gave us the down payment of the spirit. And that's a capital S. He put the Holy Spirit as a down payment to show us what we uh, will inherit in the fullness. Right now we have a measure of it, but there it will be in full. Therefore, always being confident and knowing that while we are in the body, we are away from home, from the Lord. You've got to look at here as, as a temporary uh, duty. TDY, I'm a military man, so TDY, we call it temporary duty. That means that you're not at your permanent base, but you're you're doing your work, your job, your mission at another base. You have a mission to do, and you got to get that accomplished before you can return to your permanent base. And Paul is saying here, we have a mission here to accomplish before we are called home to be with Christ. Your home is not here. Your home is with Christ. Somebody say, well, we're not going to be in heaven forever. No, the scripture lets us know that uh, God is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. In the book of Revelation, it tells us, uh, that he created a new heaven and a new earth. However, uh, we wherever Christ is, that will be your eternal home. You will always be with him. The Bible tells us when we when we uh, uh, appear with him, we shall never be separated from him ever again. Paul says when we're caught up in rapture, say we shall forever be with the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. In other words, we walk by what we know through the revelation that God has given us through his word as well as through the Holy Spirit, which is which which never contradict each other. The Holy Spirit will never contradict the word of God, and the word of God will never contradict the will of the Holy Spirit. It will always be in line. So if you have a, a spirit a feeling that's that's contradictory to the word of God is not the Holy Spirit. And if you have uh, something that contradicts or uh, calls into uh, question the truth of God's 
uh, word in the spirit and, and in Christ and all, then you don't have the true word of God. So any doctrine that contradicts the word of God is a false doctrine. But we are confident and prefer rather to be away from home from the body and to be at home with the Lord. In other words, Paul is saying uh, our desire and our confidence is that we will be away from, we, we would rather be away from this house, this tent, this temporary home to be with our permanent home with the Lord. Therefore, also we have in verse 9, as our ambition, our ambition, our um, desire, our strong desire, uh, whether being at home or being away from home, to be well-pleasing to him. Whether we're in this body or whether we're there with him, we want to be well-pleasing with him. That's our passion. That should be our passion, if it's not. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that each one may receive the things done in the body in accordance with the things which he did, whether good or bad. Knowing, therefore, the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. Uh, in the King James Version, it says, knowing the terror of God, we persuade men. In other words, knowing that what the results will be if, uh, if a person does not have Christ and they have to face the judgment seat. See, all of, all of us that are saved, we have one judgment. And that's this, here he talks about the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, the, the word there for judgment is uh, bima, the bima seat of Christ. That's the Greek word bima. So it's the judgment seat of Christ. But it, but that judgment is not to judge whether you are saved or not. That's to judge what rewards you're going to receive. That's to judge what titles you will receive uh, for eternity. That's where, that's where you will get uh, the gifts that will remain yours for eternity. Right now we have gifts that are temporary. We have abilities that are temporary. We have blessings that are temporary. They're only for now. But there we will get a permanent assignment of what we're going to receive. Some people will receive nothing but their salvation. That's all they have for eternity because they put emphasis and they put their passion and their ambition and their desires, they put all of that, their faith, all in the uh, physical realm, in the materialistic realm. They, whether it was for money or for status or for position or for, for titles or whatever here, they, they gave it all to here and, and neglected to uh, do the things that pleased Christ first. So Paul says, knowing the fear of the Lord, we persuade men. In other words, we witness to them. We try to let everyone know the good news of Jesus Christ, that he has come to save their souls from sin and to deliver them from a devil's hell. That's what we do. If you really, really want to please God, and you really, really have come to an understanding of what it means to be without God, this is what you will do. In other words, let's say if you know there's a cliff, the, the road is, is washed out down, uh, down, the, down the way, and uh, there's, a, there's a big drop off a big cliff, and it's dangerous to go down there, and anyone passing, going down there is, is almost certain to be destroyed or to be killed and all. You will stand and try to warn them. To stop. Stop what you're doing. Stop on the road that you that you're headed, the direction you're headed, and turn around. That's what that's what sharing the gospel is. We, we're telling them to stop and turn around. There's a better route. There's a better road. There's a better destination than the path that they're taking. Now, and therefore, the fear of the Lord we persuade men. But we have been made known to God. And I also hope to have been made known in your consciences. In other words, uh, we, God knows who we are. He knows us. But Paul says, I hope you know us too. I hope you know that 
they were real in this. This is not a front. This is not a show. It's not just something we, we want attention for. No, we want you to know the truth. And if you know the truth, we know that the truth will make you free. And whom the Son sets free is free indeed. That's our desire. But I'm going to leave you again with this question. What will you say? What are you saying to the Lord now when you hear the word of God come to you? What are you saying? Are you saying, yes, Lord? Or are you saying, no, not, not today, not for now, later? And then when you stand before him, what will you say about what you just said in your heart? Somebody might say, well, you're trying to scare me. Yes, I'm trying to scare you to do, to save your soul, to save your life, to save your et eternal future. That's my desire. Because I know what God did for me. I know what he has done. There's a lot of things in my past that I'm not proud of and that I regret. And, and, I, and I say that freely because it's not about me. I'm a failure outside of Christ. But through Christ, I can do all things because he strengthens me. Because of Christ, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. I've been made more than a conqueror. I have goodly, a godly and a goodly success because of Christ. He is my success. He's my deliverer. He is my best. So set aside your pride. Set aside your ego. And humble yourself under God's mighty hand. And ask him to forgive you of your sins. Ask him to forgive you of your past. And then trust in him. Because if we confess our sins, he is faithful. Meaning you can count on it. He will not fail you. And he is just. He will be fair with you. More than fair. He will be fa he's faithful and just to forgive you of your sins. And to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Father, what will we say to you when we stand before the judgment seat of your son, Jesus Christ, who has been given by you the authority to judge all things? And when he has put down all sin and put down all the things that are contrary to your will and to your word, then he will give the kingdom back to you, present it to you clean, pure, and holy. But what will we say to him? And what, and what can we say to you now? But to say thank you, Father. Thank you for saving us, for loving us so much that you sent your only begotten son, that whoever would believe on him would not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you for forgiving us of our sins, for we deserve to be judged. We were wrong. I was wrong. I have nothing to hold up to say, look at what I've done or what I've accomplished. Nothing that I can do could ever earn salvation or even earn your grace. Nothing I can do. So I confess that, and I ask, Father, that your glory will be revealed through our lives so that the light that you've placed in us will shine before men and women everywhere and they will see our good works and glorify you who are in heaven so that you receive all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor forever. Amen and amen. God bless you, saints. Until next time, go with God.